Uh, before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the beautiful territories of the tsleil Squamish, and Musqueam Nation on which uh, the BCIT campus uh, are lo located on. Always a pleasure to work on these territories. I'm Caroline de Petit, the Associate Dean for Business Administration, along with Natalie Anderson. Natalie is an intern uh, with the School of Business and Media. We will be, we will be kind of leading this, well, facilitating more the session. However, we do have, um, you know, your host, Kevin Wainwright. Maybe, Kevin, you can give us a little wave. Uh, Kevin will be the leader of the session today. If you do have questions, you know, because it's a small group, uh, you can either put them, ideally put them in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen, or you can use a chat and we can certainly answer things from there. Um, there's two more series left, webinars left, two more weeks, two more Tuesdays, so we encourage you to come. Next week is about library and academic integrity, and the following week is about student clubs and how you can get um, involved or information at BCIT. But for today, um, oh, yeah, Natalie, we won't do the poll because there's not that many people. That's okay. Uh, for today, your facilitator, facilitator is Kevin Wainwright. I just introduced that, him. Kevin is the Associate Dean for Broadcast and Media in the School of Business and Media. Kevin has been at BCIT for over 25 years. Is that what, you, what we said yesterday? That's what, I, that's what the plaque <laughs> said, yes, on that's the wall the there. Plaque. Yeah, there's not many faculty that have the 25-year plaque, so uh, he's yeah. our uh, resident guru ec economist, so knows a lot about um, the economy, but as well um, has done many uh, jobs at BCIT, again, most recently Associate Dean in for Broadcast and Media. So really excited to have you, Kevin, today, not just to present the topic, but also to kind of answer questions um, around anything and everything at BCIT. So I will... Uh, remind you again of the following um webinars coming but for now i guess i'll just turn it over to kevin okay well thank you so i'm going to talk a bit about today about some of the learning platforms and the different tools and platforms we have at bcit that students get exposed to so one of the things that uh often comes up especially in this new new era where everything is so digital and online is people asking, well, what is the right platform? Where should I be looking for things? And there's all these different uh, uh, links and, and URLs and platforms I need to use, and I'm not sure which one I'm supposed to be on. So I wanted to take a chance to show you what we have and what they're for specifically. And let me just, what's happened here? Um, uh, give me one second. Um, I want to share my screen. Okay. And so this is, uh, I'm going to give you a little PowerPoint. So we're going to talk about learning platforms at BCIT. So the big ones that you'll see from part-time studies is there is the My BCIT which uh, is found at my.bcit.ca. There is the Learning Hub, which is found at learn.bcit.ca, as well as there's a variety of publisher platforms we use. And the big three biggest publishers out there for Institute Books are Pearson, McGraw-Hill, <coughs> and Wiley. And I'll talk a bit more about those in a minute. So what are they for? Well, the first one is my BCIT. This is where you get your official BCIT email. You can go in to view your grades, check your accounts, update your personal information, get communications from the Institute um, about things like uh, upcoming your registration for the upcoming terms. Um, you can also check your registration status, make sure that you're in all the courses you signed up for. Uh, you can get your printout of your tax forms for your income tax, for your tuition, your UPASS. And this is found at the MyBCIT URL. Then there is the Learning Hub. Now the Learning Hub is where you primarily will be going to uh, during the term for all of your courses. So all of your instructors will have their courses with a learning hub uh, landing page. 
and in there, there will be things like your course information, your lecture notes, uh, lecture slides. Virtual lectures will be hosted inside the Learning Hub. Uh, you also can do online quizzes in the Learning Hub. Uh, homework assignments can be posted there, and there is the ability for you to upload and hand in assignments. Instructors will frequently run chats or discussion groups within the learning hubs. And then again, like I said, there is the publisher platforms. Uh, the three big ones are Pearson's My Lab and Mastering, McGraw-Hill's Connect, and Wiley's, what's called Wiley Plus. Now these are not BCIT platforms. These are platforms attached to textbooks. However, when you sign up for a course such as in economics or statistics or accounting, quite frequently you will get a package that includes a login for one of these platforms. These are fantastic tools that allow you to do practice problems, practice quizzes, um, online homework. Uh, it, they have become very interactive and they are replacing essentially what would be a study guide. Okay. Now, if we go to the BCIT's homepage or School of Business homepage, uh, you will find that at the top of every BCIT page on the little sub menu are links. So there'll be the Learning Hub and My BCIT. So if you don't remember the direct URL, you can always just simply go to bcit.ca and find Learning Hub or My BCIT. So if you click on My BCIT, you get the BCIT login page, which looks something like this. And most of you should have already seen it because this is how you first got registered into BCIT. And this is where you go to get your student number. So your login, which will be the student number with begins with an A, logs you onto my BCIT, that will actually be your login for almost everything at BCIT, including the Learning Hub, uh, any other uh, tools that you may want to access. And if you happen to be, uh, have access to one of the computer labs, this is also a computer workstation login will be the same thing. Once you've logged in, you typically get a home page. Now, everyone's will be a little different now because I'm a teacher. Mine tends to look a little different, but they tend to have the BCIT homepage, announcements. In the center will be your BCIT email box. And it's important you check this box. Check for all, because all your official emails will go to your My BCIT email address. And you see, I have one there that's Kevin Wayne, K. Wainwright1 at mybotbcit.ca. Many of you can go in and set up the mail forwarding option to send it to your Gmail or Hotmail account. I strongly recommend that even if you are forwarding your email, you check it regularly. Sometimes emails do not forward properly, depending on spam filters. And then You'll notice across the top, there are a series of tabs, Campus Life, My Courses, Student Resources, and so on. BCIT, My BCIT was in fact our original teaching platform. We have since replaced it with the Learning Hub for the teaching portion, but we still use My BCIT for all administrative work. So the big piece that you will tend to use will be over on the right-hand side called online self-service. When you click on that, it'll take you to a page like this. And this is where you can check your communications, change your uh, mailing address, update your password, um, check your grades. If you uh, want to request a transcript because you're uh, going to carry education on another institute, you can do that through MyBCIT. You can get your U-Pass, which is the uh, transit pass discount given to all full-time students and part-time students at university and colleges in BC. Uh, and of course, the part that uh, the finance department of BCIT loves, fee assessments, payments, and receipts. Okay. And at the bottom, you can get your tax forms for when you do your, your tax return for any deductions you get for being a student. Okay. 
Now, the next site I'm going to take you to is the Learning Hub. And when you log on to the BCIT Learning Hub, it will give you something that looks like this. You will see, in my case, I have instructor updates. There are system updates. And down here, you see it says My Courses. And you will see these tiles. Every course that you're registered in will appear in the Learning Hub. And it will appear as a tile that you can click on. And when you click on the tile, and if I choose my Otman 7701 calculus, it will take you to the course homepage in the Learning Hub. And that looks something like this. And in there, you will see course information posted by the instructor. You can see that this course I ran on Thursday nights, gave information about using my math lab um, and the textbook. And on the bottom right side, you will see it says the My, Ma My Lab Mastering widget. And that is the link that's installed in the Learning Hub that allows me to link my course to the Pearson My Lab and Mastering portal, which comes with the textbook that I had chosen. Okay. Now, not all courses will use one of these um, publisher portals. It'll depend on the instructor, depend on the course. But every course will use My Lab and, and uh, uh, sorry, use uh, the Learning Hub. And in the Learning Hub, you will be able to go to the table of contents for your course, a list of activities, see how your grades are accumulating, various course tools, and the big one, activities. If you click on that, it will give you a menu. And under activities, you will have things like your discussion forums that your instructor will set up, assignments both for seeing what your next assignment is and also the ability to hand your assignment in. So instructors require you to upload uh, a report or an assignment. You would do that here on the Learning Hub. You can also take quizzes online and instructors, depending on the course, will post quizzes here. Then there is the tab that says Virtual Classroom. So this is where you can have a, the live streaming and real time lectures. So instructors will have uh, scheduled uh, some type of uh, window during your class time. Normally you would have come to class and had your lecture in Burnaby or downtown. Um, now you'll have your lecture through the so-called virtual classroom. The virtual classroom is actually uh, supported by the tool Bongo. And Bongo is in many ways just like Zoom. Zoom and Bongo are two uh, communication platforms that people like to use. Each one does basically the same thing. Uh, one is strong in one area, the other is strong in another area. You can use Bongo and Zoom independent of BCIT. You can set up Zoom meetings with anybody, friends, family, classmates. But you can also uh, have discussions with your instructors using the virtual classroom or using discussion web forums. Okay. So all of this found within the Learning Hub. So while you're a student at BCIT, you should be going into the Learning Hub and that is your primary landing page or landing spot for all of your coursework. And be sure to check all the announcements and all the postings to make sure as your instructor updates this throughout the term. Okay, now, this is the landing page for Pearson's MyLab series. And this is very popular for math classes, economics classes, and accounting classes and statistics classes. So you may get one of your textbooks will have the, the, the Pearson uh, connection and this is the landing page that you will find and you will get uh, account or how to register and a, uh, an access code usually comes with your textbook. 
if your your if your instructor is using a book published by McGraw Hill, the second biggest publisher, then they use a platform called Connect, and it's exactly like my my lab, except it is for McGraw Hill textbooks, and this is what their landing page will look like. The other large publisher that has a really excellent resource is Wiley, and Wiley uses the Wiley Plus uh, platform. All three platforms do many of the same things. They will have links to e-texts, they will have uh, practice problems, they will have study guide problems, uh, depending on each and each textbook. There'll be varying degrees of interactive tutorials that you can take advantage of. The publishers have done a phenomenal job in the development of these tools. And I, now that I've assigned and used uh, Pearson with textbooks, I don't think I would ever teach a course without giving my students the opportunity to use them. So those are the primary uh, platforms that we will be using at BCIT. I'm going to stop the sharing now. Um, there are a few other uh, tools that are used when you're in school that uh, are popular by your, you and your classmates, such things as Google Docs uh, or Dropbox. Uh, a lot of students will set up accounts with uh, either Google Docs or Dropbox to share files, work on homework assignments or team projects. Um, these are outstanding uh, products. However, they're not BCIT products. So if you have a problem uh, with using Google Docs or you lose your homework in Google Docs, um, there, uh, we can't give you any support. This is not something that we look after. But they are, like I said, they are one of those tools that people do use. So again, the big ones you want to be able to use, you want to get onto my BCIT for all important official communication with the Institute and to check your emails. You use the Learning Hub for all your educational needs. You go in there. That is your touch point for your instructor, for your course, for your homework. The one thing I will give you uh, a warning about, um, do not use, uh, if you're going to email your instructor, I recommend you email them from outside of the Learning Hub. We have a little bit of a glitch with the email system within the Learning Hub. Can't guarantee that the instructor will see it right away. They will see if you email them from MyBCIT or if they've handed out their direct email address, uh, you can email them directly. So that covers the key points of the topics I want to touch on tonight. Are there any questions? Um, one thing that I wanted to mention to um, the attendees as well is that our second student success uh, webinar was on uh, BY. OD, so bring your own device. So I think it lets you know a little bit about what device you need to bring into the classroom. And we will, um, it's going to be really important for you to obviously have a functioning device, but also with a camera and a speaker. And I don't know about you, Kevin, but I certainly had experience, especially in the virtual classroom on the learning hub where students have tried to, where I've done breakout rooms and it wouldn't work with students that are on a cell phone. Um, so we really try to discourage you from attending a class on your cell phone. Uh, I don't think that's really good for you <laughs> or there's some functions that your cell phone will not be able to access. Yes, Do you have any that, comment on that? Yeah. That is a good point. One of the things that uh, we're doing at BCIT is that the uh, Information Technology Services Department is developing more and more remote access capabilities so that there are certain softwares that we teach in class that are very uh, proprietary or expensive. And historically, students would only use them when they were on campus, such as in my area, the Broadcast Center, we have some very strong uh, editing software for editing videos. 
uh, they're typically really expensive for someone to put on a home computer and most home computers aren't that powerful. So we have set up the ability for you to log in remotely and use many of the different softwares we have at BCIT. However, you cannot log in and use that software from a phone or from an iPad. Mm -hmm. You must have a properly functioning computer, whether it's a Mac or a PC, um, it must be a fully functioning computer for you to be able to use the remote login. But from the development, we should be at a position where many of the software that very specialized, very expensive software like Adobe Suite will be available for students to use what we call the remote desktop. Okay. Uh, can you pre I had a question. Will we get an email on the start date and instructor info from BCIT on our individual course? Um, depending on which course you registered from, I'm assuming you have a start date and an end date. Uh, however, your instructor should send you a welcome e a email a week ahead of time, right? We usually encourage a week ahead of time to, yeah. uh, telling you about some of the details. Yeah, so each course has uh, the, the tab or the tile in the Learning Hub will come on, become active as you get closer to the start date of the course. So different courses will have uh, different start dates. Uh, if there's some material needed early, instructors will go in and uh, change the start date so that it starts a bit sooner. But typically, um, the Learning Hub doesn't become available until uh, just before the start of the first class. Okay. Yeah, and that answers Mary. You had a question. When I click my registered course on Learning Hub, uh, I'm not allowed to access any detailed information just because they're not accessible quite yet. So they will become accessible closer to the start of time, uh, of, of the start of time of class. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, That's right. yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Mary. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to add that that it's it's for people who ha if you, if you're uh, joining us today or listening to this and you haven't listened to the second webinar or on bring your own device, it might be something worthwhile for you to go back and listen to know exactly what you need. And again, a functioning camera, and um, especially if you're going to have synchronous lectures, some of your class might be uh, depending on which course you registered for. Um, some of the classes, many of the classes actually are going to have synchronous or so live sessions as well as asynchronous so work that you'll need to do outside of class time so um, a functioning microphone and camera will be important for these times um, any other questions from our uh, attendees tonight no oh there might be another one can you see it kevin yeah Okay, I was late to log in. I tried to borrow a book at the library, Burnaby, and they said I can only borrow the book for a week. Okay. Um, every, if you're talking about the BCIT library, uh, depending on the book and whether how it's used in the course, they may have it set so you can borrow it one week, two weeks, 24 hours, four hours. Uh, the length of time you can borrow the book is something you would have to talk to the library about. I don't have the answer to that question. Mary, Mary G, was it if it's a textbook that's used in a class, usually you can't borrow it for more than a month because they wanted to have it accessible to other students. So if it's a book that's highly either recommended or mandatory for a class, there's a, it's called, there's a hold on it, which means, yeah, there's a defined time. So it's not really um, our decision, unfortunately. It's kind of, you can talk to the library, but ideally if you need that textbook for the whole term, you should probably consider purchasing it. Yes, but good questions. These are all very good questions. I know I've been uh, at BCIT for, um, a year and certainly learning a lot, although this library stuff is quite common with all libraries across post-secondary institutions. Okay, so um, we expected a short session today, which, which is fine. Any other question, guys, about what Kevin showed you? Uh, this will be really important in terms of how you use 
uh, the learning hub, go into a virtual classroom. Zoom, I would encourage all of you to get the Zoom. I think there's a Zoom app you can get, right? I don't know if you mentioned that, Kevin, I may have missed yep. it. There's yeah. a Zoom app, and if you go onto BCIT's homepage and you use the search bar to look up Zoom, they will give you an explanation about how the Zoom works and how you can use the BCIT uh, Zoom, which gives you a little bit more functionality than the free Zoom you get when you download it from the App Store. Yeah. And I can tell you, and Kevin might uh, talked about his own experience, but in my classes, what I typically do is I use the Learning Hub in the virtual classrooms. However, I did have uh, times this year when, for example, I had um, students had to do presentations online, live presentations. So I went to Zoom for the live presentation. It was just a little bit easier um, to get students on that platform for that type of assessment and delivery. So some of your instructors will definitely switch between both. Kevin, I'm not sure, what do you use in some of your classes? Um, I will use Zoom um, if I have to do um, a lot of visuals. Um, I will go back and forth between the, so when I do teach a class, I will have students go through the virtual uh, lecture but I will always have a Zoom uh, appointment booked at the same time. So if we have any type of technical problems, um, I'll say, okay, everybody just log out of the virtual classroom and click on the Zoom link and we'll carry on. But- um, Kevin's very organized. <laughs> yeah, so you will see both types of tools. Um, Bongo, is the official tool that's built into the Learning Hub. Uh, so that way you can log on to the Learning Hub. If you're gonna use Zoom, or if an instructor wants you to use Zoom, they're gonna have to send you the link directly. But if they're using uh, the Learning Hub, then you simply go onto the Learning Hub under activities, pick virtual, virtual lecture and click, and you will join into the class, okay? Mm -hmm. And Mary, you had a question. Normally, Zoom is used for the online class or some other platform. I think Kevin just answered that. But um, I would say, in I don't know what every instructor uses, but in my knowledge, most instructors use the Learning Hub and the virtual classroom for their synchronous piece. For asynchronous, obviously, they have stuff to do. Um, you know, you might have like on asynchronous online discussions where you have to talk to each other online so the learning hub will be used for that as a, as a discussion platform so zoom some instructors will use it for sure just because they're more family, familiar with that platform they'll let you know but as a whole i think the learning hub and virtual classroom is that's what we you know we're supported well through our it services at bcit yeah good question though you guys have very good question thank you well, I think half an hour, that's awesome, Kevin. We'll leave it at that. Um, I just wanted to remind students, sorry, I just have a little thing here I'm gonna pull. Um, there is, I was just gonna give, put the link in the chat. There's a new, um, our student life office has a new site for you to go to. Uh, let me just, I'll just put the information here in the, let me just cut and paste, sorry, copy. Just get in the chat. Uh, they have a new Learning Hub site for you to access. If you want to cut that to access, it's kind of a student. It's called the Student Success Hub, so you can definitely access this. Um, re, I also wanted to remind uh, PTS students that uh, you have different services throughout your term that are available. If you're interested throughout the term. You can have um, access to uh, counseling at BCIT, to um, student advocates, to the student association. So we're gonna talk about some of these in the next few sessions. So feel free to join us. Again, next week is about academic library resources. So be a good question to ask your question, whoever had the question about borrowing books. So library and academic integrity. And then our last week is gonna be about student club, the student association. So lots of information still to come. Um, so I think that's it, Kevin. I think we can say goodbye unless you have anything, last few words of wisdom. Oh, your mic's off. Um, 
Yeah, I think this video, what does it take, about 24 hours for this to be uploaded and put on the website? Yep. Okay. Um, and as far as your virtual classroom practice, uh, you will have to wait till the class is live. On the other hand, if you want to download Zoom, you can go chat with a friend. It's exactly the same thing. Okay. So I will leave it at that. Yeah, and I was going to say, I know... Uh, last year, I was new to the virtual classroom, so I did a practice run with my students ahead of time. It's fairly self-explanatory. It's fairly easy, um, so I think it, it should be fine. And your first class will be, your instructor will definitely kind of take it more easy, hopefully, to kind of get you introduced to that to this platform. Okay, so thanks for this question, Mary, for sure. Well, thank you, Kevin. I think this was a really informative uh, session. Thank you for your time. Uh, and uh, everybody that joined, I hope you guys have an amazing term. Thank you so much for joining us at BCIT. Uh, and if you have any questions, I know there's lots of links you can go to at BCIT, but feel free, free to reach out. That's about it. Thank hey. you, everybody. Good night. Have a good night.